So, there have been many people attempting to explain why Godzilla floats in 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters. There was this one Reddit post that went around when the first when the film first came out, uh, leading to a lot of hilarious memes that followed it. The YouTuber Landry Miller made a pretty good video about how Godzilla could be standing on a seamount because the Caribbean area is filled with them. This theory, however, kind of falls apart when you realize that the nuke probably blew off whatever mountain was left. And if it didn't, then that's one hell of a durable volcano, but it doesn't seem the most plausible. So I went on my own investigation, seeing if there was a more likely explanation that made a bit more sense. And then I came across this. While this website no longer exists, it was archived by the good fellas at Wikizilla. Promoting 2014's Godzilla came with many statistics being displayed, with one of them being the body volume of the titular character of 89,724 cubic meters. Scaling up to his 393 feet state in King of the Monsters from his 355 feet state in G14, using the square cube law, we could get KOTM Godzilla's volume of 121,731 cubic meters. Now, why is this important? How flotation and buoyancy work is it's based on density. To be more clear, the more dense object will always sink into the less dense object. You might have heard of how oil floats on water. That's because oil is less dense than water, allowing it, allowing it to stay on top of water. Well, that and oil is hydrophobic, but you get the point. Now, let's take us humans, for example. We are roughly 985 kilograms per cubic meter, compared to sea waters, 1,020 kilograms per cubic meter. That is why we float, but because our density is so close to the density of water, we have to tread water with our arms or kick our legs to stay afloat, or lay on our backs to maintain flotation as well. But Godzilla? Not sure if there's a struggle there. He's floating all right. So what is Godzilla's body density? Well, at least in King of the Monsters, but we'll get to G14 in a second. If you guys forgot, density in kilograms per cubic meter equals mass in kilograms divided by volume in cubic meters. I mean, I guess it was pretty obvious at this point, but if you want to remember this better, remember that you have to quote unquote drive in through the through the DMV. Uh, you can thank Matt Pat for that. That's how I remembered it. Uh, anyway. Godzilla, by 2019, weighed in at 99,634 tons, or 90,384, uh, 90,384,444 kilograms. Dividing 90,386,444 uh, by 121,731 gets us a density of 742.5 kilograms per cubic meter. That is right, folks. Godzilla in the MonsterVerse, in both King of the Monsters and even Godzilla vs. Kong, is less dense than humans. And uh, by this logic, he actually could live in our world if his body was of different composition. I think the most hilarious part about all this is that Godzilla in 2014 has a higher density than King of the Monsters as Godzilla. Dividing Godzilla's 90,000 ton weight, or in kilograms, 81,646,627 kilograms by 89,724 gets us a density of around 910 kilograms per cubic meter. No wonder Godzilla can move much faster and swifter in his following appearances. Anyways, with that 742 kilograms per cubic meter, that would make this graphic accurate. He just floats.